Hey everyone, this is Mike, and today it's time for Sage, our new healer introduced in Endwalker. I was quite excited for this one because, well, I like playing healer, and we haven't had a new one since Heavensward, and it also just looked really cool from the job action trailer, and then later also when we got some extra information via the media tour. So I decided that it would be my first healer that I was going to level, and I gotta say, it didn't disappoint. Not only does it look cool from an aesthetic perspective, well, to me at least, it also feels great to play. Now, when you first look at the kit, you might think Think that it just has too much. There are a lot of different cooldowns that we do have, but I also feel like it's needed, or at least when you're the only healer. And that is because while we do have a lot of tools, they aren't all super strong. So while some of them are very nice on their own, you'll often find yourself using multiple cooldowns together. Like for example, on Scholar, I'd be able to use Whispering Dawn after a raid wide, and that would get everyone pretty much back to full HP over its duration. However, on Sage, I'd have to use both Feces and Keratrol together to get the same healing effect and I personally don't dislike this it means that I get to press more buttons which with healers being the way that they are is not a bad thing because just spamming that one button can get boring after a while on the other hand, making use of all of these cooldowns is also really important, because your GCD heals are very weak. So yes, you have a lot of cooldowns, but you also need to make good use of them or Sage is going to feel very weak, in the sense that once you do run out, you don't really have much to fall back on. But from my limited time with the job so far, it has been fine more often than not. I've only had a few instances where I needed to resort to just spamming my GCD heals, trying to keep people alive, but that only happened when I ran into a bad duty finder group, as in the tank doing big pulls but not using cooldowns and the DPS also aren't bursting down the mob packs fast enough or people are constantly getting hit by stuff that they're not supposed to get hit by. If, on the other hand, you get into a good group, then Sage just feels incredibly comfy to play, because at that point you won't even have to make use of all of your cooldowns. I also quite enjoy the damage aspect of Sage, not just because it does a lot of damage, because yes it does, but in the way that they do it. You of course have your normal spammable spell, like all of the other healers, but the other spells are kind of different. So first we have our Dot. This one is one of the few spells that works with the Eucrasia buff, which is a GCD that you press and it will then transform a few actions into their Eucrasia variant. It's essentially still the same as pressing one GCD time-wise, because the recast time of the two actions is so fast, but you're still pressing two different buttons. So it did feel a bit weird at first, because I tried to put all my actions on similar buttons like I have them for Scholar, because there's a lot of similarities between the skills that these two jobs have, but Eucrasia did change things a little, although I know I could just put the same spell on my hotbar twice if I really wanted to, because that's how a friend of mine did it. But I wanted to see if I could get used to it, and after playing around with it for a while, I did. So while the Eucrasia skills are neat, I don't really use them as often as I was first thinking that you would, because I thought this was going to be a very big part of the feeling of Sage, but because it only affects your dot and your shielding spells, you're not really going to be using it all that often in a boss fight. On dungeons it's a different story though, because you can shield on the run, which is fantastic. So you interact with the dot a little bit differently than you do on the other healers, because you need the time to prep that Eucrasia buff, but outside of that, that not a huge difference. The other two spells that we have left though are really cool, or I guess three spells, but one of them is a healing tool, so you won't be spamming that on cooldown all the time. Now, first we have Phlegma. This is our charged action, stacks up to two times, and also our highest damage spell. So you can choose to use this on the raid buffs for extra DPS, or you can just keep it around for when you need to move, because it is an instant cast action, but it also requires you to be in melee range to use it. And I know some people dislike this part of the spell, but I think it's quite neat. And then we also have Toxicon. When I first looked at this skill, I thought it would purely be there for AoEing, because it does the same damage as Dosis, which is your spammable spell, but it's actually amazing for movement. The only other instant cast offensive GCD that we have is Phlegma, and that one is melee only, and it also comes with those charges, so you don't want to just sit on them for when you need them for movement, and that's where Toxicon comes in. You get charges for this by letting your single target shield break. So in a normal boss fight, it's not something that you will always be getting constantly because you don't really want to be casting single target shields on people all the time. But in a dungeon, it's super easy to get. And when there is downtime in a fight, for example, both of the extreme trials have an add phase after which they do a raid wide attack. But while you're waiting for the raid wide to go off, you can just cast as many shields as possible to try and get your three stacks. So it's something that you can do, whereas otherwise you'd just be standing around waiting 
waiting for the boss to do its thing. And then of course in dungeons you can just give it to the tank or even yourself while you're gathering mobs and then you can just get one or two stacks that way and you can always use those for DPS because while it isn't a DPS gain on single target it's quite a DPS gain for AoE. So I do like that you're just not spamming that one button. For AoE you'll be rotating between that Toxicon when you have stacks, Flagma when you've got charges and then you can just fill in the rest with your normal AoE button and the same thing goes for single target. You got your spammable spell, you throw in Flagma for movement or to just not let it over cap and then when you need extra movement that is where you can try and get those Toxicon stacks for. So yeah, I quite like it. Also, after having played Scholar for Roulette a little bit, I immediately missed not having an instant cast shield and Icarus, the gap closer. As Sage, you can just run alongside your tank while you're shielding them, because your shield is instant cast, and you can even run ahead and dash into a pack of enemies to proc your shield, so that you can get an extra stack of Toxic on that way. You can't really do that on Scholar, because if I want to cast an Adlo on my tank, I have to stand still, and by the time I'm finished casting, the tank has probably run ahead already, and I don't have a gap closer to catch up either. So while I at first thought Icarus was a little bit of a meme, I've actually grown really fond of the ability, and I miss it when I'm not on Sage. It also just looks really cool, and you can do some fun stuff with it, like for example when me and some friends were running the level 81 dungeon, one of my friends was on Reaper, and I was a little bit behind of the rest of the group, so I told him to time his jump whenever I used Icarus on him and then I just flew halfway across the dungeon because you keep following the person until they reach their end as well. But it can also be a little bit of a negative because that same friend of mine also played Sage in one of the extreme trials and he ended up dashing towards one of the team members that got hit by an ability that knocked them off the arena so he of course followed off the arena as well. So it just makes for some funny moments. But I also think that it can just be a very useful skill in case you do need that gap closer. It has certainly come in handy for me a fair amount of times. So all of these things combined together have made it so that Sage is, for me at least, a very enjoyable job to play. It looks cool and it feels great. And if I have to look for something negative to say about the job, then it would be that we can't use our stacks on something offensive. Like for example, Scholar has Energy Drain as their offensive Aetherflow skill, but Sage doesn't have anything like that. And while there are certainly moments where I'm constantly using all of my stacks for healing, there have also been a lot of moments where I'm just sitting on three stacks with nothing to use them on. And I do hope that they'll give it a Scholar treatment and give us some sort of an ED ability because that is currently the only thing that I feel like Sage is missing. Outside of that, I don't think that there is anything that I can complain about currently and we'll see how Sage ends up pairing up against the other three healers once I get those leveled as well. But for now, I'm very happy with what we got and I'll currently be playing this one quite a bit. Been doing some expert dungeons on it and then last night I also took it into one of the extreme trials and it was just a blast to play. Anyways, I think that's all about I really got to say so before I just keep on rambling, I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support and I'll see you in the next one.